Get out the way, who got a watch, who got the time, I'm raising the clock Even if my feelings grind don't stop, got big dreams, want big rocks I got plans, who got talk, that is real cheap, but it's really cold cost I'm trying to get these ends, build buyers with my friends I'm about handling my business, no time for stress over bullshit You think success is an option, I'm trying to get this shit popping like woo, Big move What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey girl, hey. Welcome back to another episode of Homegirl Intervention. I am your lovely host with the most, Zaria. And yes, I'm chewing gum, but I'm gonna try to keep it to a minimum because I really don't want to spit it out. But yes, I'm aware that it's a little unprofessional. Fair, but guess what? What Beyonce say? This is my house. Oop, okay. Anyways, so crazy little thing that's happening at the moment is actually my birthday so in honor of it being my birthday today i am gonna put on this crown y'all like what why are you recording on your birthday because you gotta run it up <laughs> you don't need no sleep i promise y'all i'm only gonna wear this for the first two minutes of this video but i just want to give us a a cute little moment because it's your girl's birthday so we gotta go shoddy it's your we gotta like it's yeah y'all know youtube be copyrighting me so but no it is my birthday by the time y'all see this though it is way probably past my birthday because the first episode that's gonna go out is i'm not even gonna say too much because i might post them out of order i might post them in how i'm feeling and what the world needs to hear and if this shirt is looking real wrinkly it's because y'all this these jeans are up way too high and they high waisted and it's nothing i can do about them so they kind of make like this roll at the top um so i just if i stand up though it's giving slim and it's no sucking in yeah it's looking a little frumpy right here but it's okay it's a little wrinkled um but it's my birthday so who cares the only thing i even wanted to say about birthdays is shout out to everybody who wished me well for my birthday and gave me a birthday shout out i appreciate all the love and wishes and i'm sending y'all nothing but hugs and kisses Mwah, no bars very much so feeling the love from y'all i love the energy the spirits is high also when i edit these videos i realize i say um and like a lot that's just how i talk in conversation and really we working on it um not really but yes i hope y'all enjoy telling me happy birthday because now i'm gonna take this off because it actually is if you can see cutting off my circulation <laughs> so this gotta go i think we should throw out the idea of um tiaras like you know how people wear the tiaras and sashes it's like it's my birthday let's throw those out let's go back to the basics let's start wearing birthday hats and birthday crowns again also today is the day i dropped that homegirl intervention the first episode is coming out on sunday i have received so many dms and so many messages and i'm already receiving emails from y'all like are y'all already going to the website i mean it was just posted today but y'all are already following the page i'm gonna screenshot everybody that follow on day one and then whoever decides they want to be a moderator um dm me and if you on this list i'm gonna make you a mod because you a day one a one you know what i mean okay taking this off because it's time to get out of business oh yeah for y'all watching this and like dang when was your birthday january 2nd y'all probably seeing this like midway through january to be honest first random topic of the day i have is is it conceited to name your daughter after you or something similar like if my name is zaria right and i name my daughter zari is that doing too much be honest Cause I like, I want my children to have their own personal identity. I want them to be able to flourish, but I just feel like the name Zara is just so powerful. Like ugh, you a Z name. It's not too many things in the world with the Z. And I just so happen to be one of them. Like what do we got? Zucchini, zebra. The flower Zinnia. That's about it. Okay. I think I should take this gum out. Cause I feel like y'all can hear it. Um, the next thing I have for my random thoughts of the day is that, um, what I do to get into the club in the early 2000s as an adult, just to experience one night, the list is pretty extensive. Like to be in the club, walk, dance into stilettos, pumps in the club. That just feels like such a moment. And not only are you getting down to that type of music, but you are in like business casual outfits it's giving hr professional you're giving like 
CEO in the middle of the club dancing in stilettos pumps in the club. I just don't know. I love that aesthetic and I might end up throwing like an early 2000s club party where we all wear business casual or something. I don't know. Something about like promiscuous coming on, or coming on like the DJ just, you know, promiscuous girl with your little like vest on and blazer. I don't know. It just feels like like a scene from the movie Honey. Y'all know the movie Honey with J-Lo? That's how I want it to feel. Like, imagine walking into the club when Wangsta comes on from 50 Cent. Just the energy that I get from that just feels like such a time. So if you were in the club in the early 2000s, I know you was having a time, girl. I know you was having a time. Because it just feels like we are about to be busting the sweat in this two-piece suit set from Burlington Co Factory, or what was they shopping back in the day? JC Penny and Dillard's. But we gonna have a time. We in here in a sweater vest, but we getting down on the flow. I just, I love that. Personally, I love that. I think that that was a time to be had. Um, and I actually really like the idea. I may only be speaking for myself when I say that, because some of y'all like the club culture now. I hear a lot of people say it's dead. I had a, I had a blast. Um, yes, you got to get in a section, but I mean, if you got face card, babe, it never declines. Every section, every club, you're just getting in. I literally was with my cousins one time, story time in New York City. And I was the only black girl in the group, but we had a blast and we was jumping up and down on the dance floor and we was getting down. And it was, we went to this, we went from one bar to another because you know when you're in New York you have to like do the little bar crawl bar hop type of thing because you just meet new people in every little space you go to and we went to another bar and the line was around the corner like the line was like almost half a mile long and I'm not even being dramatic it was so many people and you know what I did I marched my way to the front and I said to the security guard look we got some of the realest the baddest the hottest girls and guys out. You want this party to pop? You need me. I'm just playing. I didn't say that, but I literally walked up and was like, how long is this line going to be? Because I'm trying to get in. Like I'm only here for a good time at a long time, like whatever. And she was like, um, you know, it's a long line. And I was like, yeah, but like, I don't want to wait in the line. And she was like, you could buy a section. I was like, I ain't really trying to find no section girl. I'm trying to be on the dance floor. And she was like, okay, well, let me see what I can do. She goes in and she's like, how many people? Guess how many people I was asking to get into the club for free? No charge at the door. 12. I had 12 people with me in New York City. 12. I said, um, I have 12 people. And she said, all right. And we skipped the line. And we got in there. No questions asked. No section. You just have to really, you have to have the gift of gab. But my gift of gab has got me in a lot of spaces and places. And my cousin was like, how did you get us in here? Don't worry about it. We're in. Let's go to the dance floor. And I danced the night away. And that was it. Happily ever after. Boop. Okay, let's get on. Because I don't want to even stick on that for too long. Back to what I was saying. I was saying that about people saying club culture is dead. You just have to get a good group of friends. Because I could be in a club completely sober and still have a ball in a section, whatever, if we're in a bar, on the dance floor, by the bar, like wherever I'm at, it's a party. Me and my friends in college, like we had a blast and we gonna have fun everywhere. We turn up in a Walmart. We have a good time, no matter where we at. Um, you just got to bring the vibes and the energy with you. Um but I get it. Now I want to pay three thousand dollars. I ain't gonna cap to y'all. We could do that at the crib. Game night at the crib versus three thousand dollars. Anyway, so this this next topic is gonna segue us right into the topic of the day, and it's the term standing on business. I see a lot of people using standing on business, and a lot of people are talking about it for the new year. But here's what I want y'all to do. Y'all know it's still January, so if we standing on business, I want y'all to stand on business with that diet. I want y'all to stand not just with the relationships and the men. I want you to stand on business at that job. I know y'all corporate girlies is getting uh, rolled over and reversed on. We'll, we, I'm, I'm going to make a whole episode about the corporate life because I just want to connect with y'all in that realm. I want y'all to stand on business on being on time. 
Okay. The whole little CPT thing is cute and all, but it's not an excuse. We adults. Seriously. If you didn't came into work for the fourth time this week, 20, 30 minutes late. You know, you're going to get a strike. So, yeah, let's stand on business in all areas and realms of life, not just with these knuckleheads. Y'all know I, I am, it is my birthday, so I am keeping it short and sweet because I got places to be and people to see, okay? But nevertheless, I do want to dive into the intervention part of today's topic because it's very important. And the intervention part of today is to embrace your sixth sense aka your gut feelings and your intuition and the reason that this is a topic today is because I feel like I sold myself short in almost every aspect of my life up until I turned and up until maybe last year around like July of 2023 right so I'm gonna dive into what I mean by that and I don't want this to come off as like conceited or cocky of like me saying I'm smarter than people, you know, like demeaning people's character. But in all in all, I feel like I have dumbed myself down to be more palatable for a lot of people, most people. Um, and there's a select few of friends and family who know like the real me, the real Zaria, like how my thoughts and like how I think and like what I think. But there is a majority of the world that knows me that only knows this surface level version of me. I'm talking about like people I've dated. I'm talking about like friends that I've had that I no longer have. And it's because I have diluted myself and not really trusted my own intuition to, I guess, be a part of something or to be accepted by something. And I don't like the idea of acceptance because it wasn't necessarily acceptance I was looking for. But like, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, it's more so of not being fully present in who I am and to be more relatable, I guess, with people. So not necessarily changing who I am, but to be more relatable. Like I have opinions on this, this, and this. I have boundaries and standards in this place, this place, this place. But then after a while of solitude and being bored and alone, you start to think like, dang, maybe my standards are too high for friendships and relationships, or maybe, you know, everybody in the world knows something that I don't, right? And it makes you second guess your own judgment. And when you start to do that, you start to second guess yourself or you start to not listen to your intuition and that gut feeling when it's telling you you need to get out of here or it's not a friend for you or, you know, you ignoring this to, to still be around and you're not addressing situations or whatever. When you do that, it starts to almost be become mute. You can hear your subconscious clearly when you're in a good head space, you keeping up with your boundaries, you keeping up with your standards and your routines, you're not letting nothing face you. But then get, you might get to a point of boredom or you might feel some type of way and you think like, man, I could just, you know, have these kind of friends. Like we don't have to be the same in all aspects or all areas of life, which is not, which is true. But you know, in your heart of hearts that these are probably not the best people I need to be around, but you're still around because, hey, what, what's the worst that could happen, you know? And so my point is the longer you ignore yourself, the harder it is to trust yourself. You would think that that, type of habit has to take a year long of ignoring yourself to go away. No, I'm talking about, it could take 10 little instances where you ignore yourself. Your brain saying, get up and go to the gym today or get up and do this or, you know, do that. And you just like, I ain't doing that right now. You might be at a table feeling real uncomfortable. People are talking about things that is like makes you uncomfortable and your brain might be saying, okay, speak up or get out of there. Like go somewhere else. And instead you're like, no, I'm, I'm going to sit here because Nobody else seems to be feeling how I'm feeling, so I must be the one in the wrong. But what happens is, like I said, after you ignore it just a few little times, it goes away. Or it just becomes very, very faint to the point where you can't tell the voice of your intuition versus your anxiety. You can't tell the difference between your self-doubt or negative self-talk and your intuition and gut feeling. And that's a terrible place to be. And it makes it a place where you cannot trust yourself. And that's the worst place to be. Then you find yourself in spaces with people that don't really care about you. They're not loyal towards you. They could care less if you're here today, gone tomorrow. You know what I mean? You in the fast lane. You in the lane of people who just hugging up and getting high. 
you just rubbing shoulders with every any and everybody that accepts you because you feel like this is the space that accepts you and it's where you need to be. And there ain't nothing wrong with this. Everybody doing it. But let me tell you something. You can't do what everybody else do. And this is me speaking for myself and for y'all. And this is not even, this message is not even for everybody because I realize a lot of people don't have that inner monologue. A lot of people don't have that dialogue of self-talk. People, some people don't even hear themselves. Nobody talks about how tiring that is to be that person because ignorance is bliss. To be a person that doesn't, that's not an empath, that doesn't feel what other people feel, to just be able to walk in this earth with your head held high in pure confidence and only care about yourself that's a hell of a superpower to have, but I don't have that superpower. My superpower is to literally feel everything. And I'm not going to say that I'm always right, but I'm rarely ever wrong. Having that gut feeling, having that instinct, having that intuition is literally a compass for you and almost everybody around you. You know what I mean? Because it started making you feel a little crazy because people will make you feel crazy and we're going to get into that. You start to see where people start doing shady stuff. And I'm not talking about like, oh, this person watched my story and didn't like my video, and didn't like my picture. I'm not talking about that type of stuff. I'm talking about you start letting little things slide by like, oh, you know, her friend, you know, they bringing around a friend is like acting real weird towards you. It's probably because they talking about you. You know what I mean? That type of energy. And you just, and, and when you ignore yourself, cause you be thinking like, that girl ain't did nothing to me. She ain't said nothing to me, but her energy just be off. Sometimes she don't address me when I say hi to her. Sometimes she weird towards me, like whatever. And your mom be saying like, it's probably because, you know, girl, they probably talk about you, like whatever. And even like, girl, no, you crazy. Like, that's not it. Some of the worst moments of my life was because I completely ignored my discernment. Actually, I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the worst moments in life is because I ignore my discernment. I thought because I have the gift of thinking ahead and intuition planning that I could dibble and dabble and do, you know, I could, I could do this and just come back on the other side. Like, Oh, nothing happened, but it almost, it only hurts you. And let me explain why to dumb yourself down for a man or a friendship or a family member. It's like jumping. Y'all know I love a metaphor. So it's like jumping from one train to another and the other train is going backwards. It's going the opposite direction. You was on the train going forward and now you're going backwards and you thinking it's not harming you. Cause you like, you know, I'm, I'm seeing everything that's coming my way. I'm seeing the little shady remarks they're doing. I know they didn't talk to this person about this. Not everybody looking at me weird. Everybody treat me weird. Some of my closest friends had this same gift and they be feeling what I'm feeling. So try to find like-minded individuals cause they'll help you not feel crazy. You know, because the world like to try to make you seem crazy because the unknown, you know, you always got to have some type of solid proof to be correct. But sometimes you just be knowing. OK, it's like the fight or flight response. So don't let nobody tell you you're crazy because just like animals have instincts, we do, too. The fight or flight that that both humans and animals have to where you get back into a corner, you're going to fight your way out. Are you going to try to run away depending on the situation? That's a part of intuition. That's a part of trusting your gut. That's a part of, you know, understanding your capabilities as a human and, and, and moving accordingly. That's a part of it. Don't let people make you feel crazy because you're not. And that's coming from Zaria. You're not. Now, one thing I have learned to do is to sometimes I stay quiet until I can get some type of real physical evidence like. Let me see. Let me let this play out. But sometimes that is like jumping on, a, on the opposite train, too, because where you could just be like, let me hang this up and walk out. You stick around to prove yourself right. You want to be right. You want the satisf satisfaction of saying, see, I wasn't crazy. I was right. And I know y'all be doing that because I used to do that. And like I said, every time you don't trust that intuition, every time you don't trust that inner monologue, those inner thoughts telling you what you need to do or what you don't need to do, you betray yourself every single time. It took me a year, a year to get it back of me not knowing like, is this my anxiety? Is this negative self-talk? So I almost feel like the version of me that everybody knew, not my closest friends, but the version of me that everybody met from 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Like that version of me was watered down. I diluted myself in almost every relationship for the past 10 years. And that's sad. And so for the first time in my life, I'm walking in pure Zaria. Yes, I'm very smart, (laughs) very educated. This is who I really am. But what do you like? Who are you? Are you watering yourself? You know how they talk about code switching? And like I said, I'm going to do another episode on the corporate life. But code switching, that's a that's a version of yourself watered down. I'm walking into this job. I'm like, I hide to be more palatable for a group of people that could give a less about me. They will let me go tomorrow if they need to start cutting budgets. You feel what I'm saying? So live authentically. Now still be professional, but live authentically. And I'm not going to pretend to be this like super smiley black girl because you feel like I'm aggressive when I'm not smiling. So I'm giving you a fake Zaria. I'm not being a fake Zaria anymore. Sorry. It have you doing stuff and saying stuff that you never would even think about doing because you're trying to please other people all for the sake of being an empath. You can feel the tension in the room when you walk in. Yeah, you can. You know what you're feeling is right. You know what you're feeling is true. Why do you need other people to validate how you feel? Why do you need other people to justify the actions that you're about to take? You don't need anybody's yeses and nos. You don't need anybody's yes, this is a good idea. You don't need people to repost your pictures. You need to support yourself. You need to trust your intuition and everything else will follow. I told my friends, I don't care if they post me on my birthday. I don't care if you repost my business. I don't care if you sign up for my emails newsletter. I don't care if you go visit my website. I don't care. You could be a good friend and I do none of those things in my book. Now, there is stuff that you can do that's a hater. But you know what I'm saying? I'm trusting my intuition. I'm trusting my gut. I see everything. So just like I'm seeing the negative, I'm seeing the positive. For every click that your family members don't do to shop your brand, there's another click that some random girl in the middle of Texas, random boy in the middle of New Jersey, random girl in Wisconsin supporting your stuff. Like, girl, I needed to hear that today. So what do you care? Some random, they supporting your business. They shopping your brand. They love you and don't even know you for real. Stop expecting people to give you the green light. You run the traffic light. Sorry to tell you. And the one thing about living the life of trusting your intuition, having your boundaries, having your autonomy, it is lonely. Sorry to say. It's a path that you walk alone. In fact, it's not even a path you walk alone. It's a path that you pave alone. I'm paving my path alone. This path is only for me. The gifts I got only for me. This path is only for me. I'm with a shovel right now. Digging. And yes, I have people that come in and out every once in a while. My closest friends and family with they shovel and they help me dig. But eventually they got to go back to digging their path. So guess what you're doing again by yourself? I got five people on this planet Earth. Five people. And that's a lot for some. Five people I know I could tell anything to that's going to ride for me, that's going to die for me, that's not going to talk down on me, and that's going to uplift and support everything I do, whether it's a text message or public, whether they post on Instagram or they send to me in voice message, Zaria, this is it. You got this. You know how many people is in this planet Earth? I don't even know, but I'm going to put it up here. And it's only five people. That's like 0.000001%. You know what I'm saying? Stop expecting to go up with a group of people. Y'all be seeing like celebrities and they be in these large groups of people. You know who they be surrounded by? They be surrounded by yes men. You want to be around yes men? I know I don't. I want a friend that's going to be like, I ain't trying to talk down on this, but I don't know if that's the right way to go. What you think about this? Blah, blah, blah. I want you to, I want you to counter what I'm doing. I like food for thought. I like devil's advocate. I like to think outside the box. And if I decide I'm still do it the way I want to do it, they ain't looking at me no different. They're like, okay, cool. If you like it, I love it. Them the type of people I got. You thinking about this high life probably surrounded around all these people and yes, men. And I'm not saying that goes for everybody. I'm just asking y'all to use y'all discernment. Stop thinking about 
having this giant support system behind you because sometimes and most of the time the only support system you will ever need is yourself and the most high you think when i started youtube my dad didn't even want me to start i started youtube when i was 18 years old because he did not want me doing youtube so i did it as soon as i left the house i had 20,000 subscribers my first month out of youtube with two three videos on the line I had a million on a cooking video. You know why I did cooking videos? Because when I would look up cooking videos, only people that's popping up is Rachel Ray and Paula Dean, And this one Jamaican lady, I, I don't remember her name, but she don't show her face. She only cook with her hands and she tells you how to make stuff. Only people I saw. Nobody my age, nobody young. So I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to pay this way. And guess what I did? I start making cooking videos. Now everybody and their mama got a cooking video. I'm not saying I pioneered it. I'm not saying they copying me. I'm just saying sometimes you got to pave the way for yourself. You got to jump off that step and it ends up being successful. And of course, like any other avenue of success, people going to try to hop on to the, the avenue of success that you own because everybody trying to ride the wave. Everybody wants success. And you might have just inspired somebody. Don't always think of imitation sometimes is a, a form of flattery because sometimes people see you and they be like, dang, I was thinking of doing that, but... Now I'm really going to do it. So don't go out there trying to befriend people and don't go out there trying to be palatable for people just to have people around. Don't just have people around because you might be blocking your blessings from the type of people you have around. You're not getting the best advice. You ever had your intuition telling you one thing and you telling your friend like, girl, I don't know about this because you know, this is his name. Like, girl, go ahead and do that. I did it before. Go ahead. Why are you trusting somebody else and not yourself? Why do you need a second opinion on how you feel? Like, you know what I'm saying? Trust yourself. Because guess what? You'd be like, you know what? My friend, right. I'm going to just go ahead and guess what? You'd be in a bad situation. And you know what the real telltale sign of it all is? You know those people that you got in your corner? Those one, two, three, four, five people? It's never really over 10 of super, super, super close people. But you know, those five people, you ever have a situation where you feel like, oh, I ain't going to tell them because I already know what they're going to say. Why would you not tell them? If it's something good, if it's something amazing, why would you not tell them? If they, if you know they're going to support these type of people that support you no matter what you do, why would you not tell them? Because you know that they see you. And if they know you, they want better for you. Why are you not telling your friends about this boyfriend? Why are you not telling them? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, my other point was you can't do what everybody else do. Simple. I talk about that every time I get on this episode, for real, for real. You cannot do what everybody else do. You will be the one you, that gets made an example out of. Because you are called to do something greater, to be something bigger. You know what I mean? I can only imagine what it's like to like see myself outside of me. You know what I mean? Like if I had a TV and I could sit outside my body and watch me make the decisions I made and be like, why are you making them decisions? You don't even got to do that. Some people got to do that. You don't even got to do that. You just trying to do what everybody else do. And that's not to say I didn't have a mind of my own. It's to say that this way everybody going, all the fish swimming that way, that looked like a shorter route than this way. But guess what? At the end of your road is a whole different outcome. So why are you trying to follow what somebody else do? And then I did write down three things that I think having a strong connection with your intuition benefits. One was quick decision making. The other one was problem solving. And the last one was risk assessment, which is basically like your intuition acting as an early warning system, alerting you for potential risks and or dangers. But it's going to be hard. I never said it's going to be easy. I don't even want you to think it's easy because it's not. It's actually not easy at all. <laughs> it's probably one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do. But that's what this life is all about, right? Basically.
Okay, so my book of the day is The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F by Mark Manson. If you are not into vulgar language, this book is not for you because he curses on every single page. Um, and I know everybody talks about this book. I try to pick books that are a little bit popular so you can see and like hear other people's opinions about them and not just mine. Like you can go look this up and see what other people and see a plethora of people talking about it so you know that it's a good book to buy. Now, I got books that... Um, People don't really talk about that often that I love, but I just think it's important to like start off with books that are kind of popular. And this is a smaller book too. You see, it's not that big, but this is a book of, it's basically a counterintuitive approach to living a good life. And, um, he talks about how to live life without the limitations of what other people think about you or what you think other people think about you. Um, and it's just a good, it's really a self-help book. Um, I promise y'all every book is not going to be self-help books. I just so happen to like books that give some form of motivation and or substance. Um, but I do have um, other books that are like, have nothing to do with that kind of stuff that I read too. I read them at the same time though. But yeah, so this book is my book of the day. And the quote that I'm going to read from this book. Now he, in this, he was kind of talking about people using, um, their emotions as a way to make excuses for the things that they do. But this specific portion, when he talked about emotional intuition, I think it's important. He says decision-making based on emotional intuition without the aid of reason to keep it in line pretty much always sucks. You know who bases their entire lives on their emotions? Three-year-old kids and dogs. You know what else three-year-old kids and dogs do? Shit on the carpet. That's a little vulgar, I know. So yeah, I think everybody should go get this book. It is a really good book to me. Um, very short read. I read this in like two days. So very short book to read. I that is our book of the day. Our song of the day. What should our, should our song be? Um, Stilettos Pumps in the Club because I know we talked about that. <laughs> I know we talked about that. I want to give y'all a real like meaningful song. But the song that's coming to my head is Rich <laughs> Risk Takers by Rich Homie Kwan. I don't know why. I think it's because I've been listening to it. Oh, you know, a song has been stuck in my head that would be a good song for today. And I even, I literally have my brothers playing that song all the time. But the song Found by Tim's and Burn Fires. So that'd be a cute song. Found by Tim's. It is a little bit of a love song, but it talks about finding yourself. And ooh, we talked about today, um, trusting yourself and your intuition. So I hope this was a good episode for y'all. It is time for me to go. It's my birthday. So, you know, I got to get back to the, back to the streets. I'm just playing. But, um, yeah, I hope y'all really enjoyed this episode. I kind of improv a little bit cause I had other bu bullet points that I wanted to get to, but I just kind of got caught up in the moment talking about something that it was like very important to me. Um, so we'll see how the editing process for this goes. Y'all know I'll be having to edit and stuff so I could make sure that my message is clear and concise. Um, don't forget to go follow the actual homegirl intervention. Um, the actual homegirl intervention YouTube channel, go subscribe over there. I'll put it in the description box as always, because like I said, behind the scenes and me reading y'all's emails and comments and things like that will be on over there. And I might put some like bonus episodes. Um, I do want to start having guest speakers on the show, but for season two, I already have a list of people that I would like to have. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out. You know, I kind of like, I, I, I want to hear other people's opinions, but I kind of like what we got going. So let me know if y'all be interested in that. Don't forget to go to the website, www.homegirlintervention.com and make an account and join our chat rooms and forums. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, follow us on social media at Homegirl Intervention on Instagram, Homegirl Intervention on TikTok, and HG Intervention on Twitter. I think that's it, y'all. It was so nice talking to y'all again. Don't forget, we have episodes every single Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. CT. And I love y'all so very much. I will see y'all next time. Mwah. Bye. First, you sure on my time been off yours, boss? Hey.